Good evening. Today we will be discussing on the supraclavicular brachial plexus block. General principles of nerve blocks. First, we should do a full anesthetic assessment, which includes history examination and investigations, and obtain a valid consent. Indications for nerve blocks includes to avoid general anesthesia due to poor health, post-op nausea vomiting or desire for early discharge from hospital, early return to normal diet, especially in diabetic patients, for post-operative analgesia, which allows effective physiotherapy, improvement of blood supply to the surgical area, and early immobilization of operative area, such as tendon repair. Contraindications for nerve blocks includes absolute and relative contraindications. Absolute contraindications are patient refusal, infection over needle puncture site, and local anesthetic allergy. Relative contraindications include coagulopathy, general sepsis for neuraxial block, uncooperative patients, and peripheral neuropathy. Performance of the block Full resuscitation facilities must be available and full monitoring according to AAGBI standards. Available personnel should include anesthetist, assistant, and a person to provide emotional support to the patient. Equipments needed includes the ultrasound, resuscitation drugs including intralipid, nerve stimulator, insulated short bevel needle, oxygen supply, local anesthetics and additives. Calculate the required dose and do not exceed maximum local anesthetic dose, etc. Confirm consent and site or site of the block, sedation with midazolam and fentanyl, aseptic technique, Don hat, mask, gown and gloves, prepare the skin with 0.5% chlorhexidine in 70% alcohol and wait until the skin is dry and drip. Analgesia includes fentanyl and subcutaneous injection of 1% lidocaine at the point of needle insertion. Techniques includes the ultrasound guided technique with or without nerve stimulator and landmark technique with nerve stimulator. Avoid intraneural injection to reduce the risk of nerve trauma, using ultrasound guidance, reposition the needle if contractions occur at less than 0.2 mA during nerve stimulation. Impulse duration should be 0.1 ms, set at 1 to 2 mA initially. As the needle approaches the likely site of injection, decrease down to 0.3 to 0.5 mA. At this stimulus, the needle tip will be 1 to 2 mm from the nerve. Reposition the needle if opening injection pressure is more than 15 PSI. Avoid excessive needle passes or injections. Use short bevel needles. Ballers observe and reposition needle. Intraoperative measures. Test for sensory and or motor block prior to inflation of tonique and surgical incision. Full monitoring as with general anesthesia. Beware of local anesthetic toxicity. Separate the patient from the surgical site with a screen. Use appropriate sedation. Check patient regularly for pain or discomfort. Always be prepared to convert to GA or abandon surgery should local anesthesia fails. Post-operative care includes protection of the operative site from injury, such as using an arm sling for a limb with residual motor or sensory blockade. Adequate preloading with analgesia. Provide information to the patient on the timing of return of sensation and motor function. Provide contact information to the patient for any queries that the patient might have. Patients with complications that may be due to nerve blocks should be reviewed by appropriate specialists. Supraclavicular brachial plexus block Indications include anesthesia for surgery of the upper limb and the hand or post-operative analgesia for surgery of the upper limb or the hand or for analgesia of the upper limb or the hand. LA is injected around the narrowest part of the brachial plexus. It has the fastest onset of the brachial plexus blocks and is also known as the spinal of the arm. Trunks divisions of the brachial plexus are closely related at this point. It provides analgesia for most of the upper limb but does not reliably provide analgesia for the shoulder. Side effects include Horner syndrome, recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy, pneumothorax, 0.1%, arterial puncture, up to 20% for landmark techniques, 
intravascular injection, hematoma, phrenic nerve palsy, neuritis, and general complications such as LA toxicity. We need subclavian perivascular approach. The middle finger of the left hand is on the subclavian arterial pulse. Also known as the subclavian perivascular block, the patient position is supine, semi-recumbent, head turned 45 degrees away towards the contralateral side, neck muscles relaxed, palpate the interscaling groove and the subclavian artery pulsation. Follow the general measures as detailed. Insert a short bevel needle, posterior and medial to the palpating finger, at the lowest point of the interscaling groove palpable in a caudate direction towards the ipsilateral great toe. Never direct the needle medially. Nerve stimulation, wrist or finger flexion or extension indicates correct needle position. Manipulate the needle until stimulation occurs at 0.3 to 0.5 mA. If no stimulation occurs, redirect the needle in the same caudal direction but at either a more anterior or posterior entry point. Move more posteriorly if the artery is punctured. LA injection, 0.5 mL per kg up to 40 mL, not exceeding the maximal dose. LA is injected in fractionated aliquots after frequent aspirations and with all due precautions. C8 or T1 nerve roots and the ulna nerve are less reliably blocked as the lower trunk of the plexus tends to sit close to the subclavian artery on the first rib. Ultrasound Technique Patient position should be supine or semi-recumbent with the head turned 45 degrees away towards the contralateral side with the neck muscles relaxed. Ultrasound settings Use a high frequency, more than 10 MHz linear probe set at the depth of 3 to 4 cm with a sagittal oblique orientation behind and parallel to the clavicle. Scan findings Ultrasound probe is placed in the supraclavicular fossa, posterior and parallel to the clavicle. The subclavian artery is seen as a round pulsatile and echoic and non-compressible structure. The plexus is visible just posterior and superior to the subclavian artery with a bunch of grapes appearance. It is difficult to determine the individual roots, trunks, divisions, or cords. The first rib should lie just below the subclavian artery and the plexus, and it provides protection from pleural puncture should the needle advance too far. Doppler ultrasound. Branches of the subclavian artery often runs through the plexus. The suprascapular artery, suprascapular vein, and transverse cervical artery can run over the top of the plexus. The needle should avoid these vessels. Needle choice, 50 to 80 mm of choice. Principles of the ultrasound technique. The block is done as an in-plane approach. Follow the general measures as detailed. Lateral approach, direct the needle underneath the plexus. Inject small aliquots of LA to lift the plexus off the first rib. Position the needle tip at the junction of the lower part of the plexus and the subclavian artery, inject LA at this point, hydrodissect the plexus of the artery. Afterwards, position the needle tip over the top of the plexus and surround the plexus with local anesthetic. Injection of LA within the plexus is done by some operators while avoiding nerve structures. Medial approach. Aim to hydrodissect the plexus of the subclavian artery. To reach the lower part of the plexus, Position the needle tip over the superior and inferior posterior side of the artery. Inject LA underneath the plexus. Surround the plexus with LA. An injection of LA within the plexus is done by some operators while avoiding nerve structures. The ultrasound beam width is analogous to only a thin credit card. The needle has to be within the beam to be visualized. Either move the probe or move the needle but not both to visualize the needle. Never move the needle if the tip is not visualized to avoid complications. LA injection. The minimal effective volume is calculated to be 32 mL, but 20 mL of LA should be adequate if the spread of LA is satisfactory. Observe the spread of LA and adjust as needed. LA is injected in fractionated aliquots after frequent aspirations 
with all due precautions, especially when near a vessel. The needle tip must be visible at all times prior to repositioning it to avoid vessel or pleural puncture. Bupivacaine, ropivacaine or levobupivacaine 0.2 to 0.5% can be used. Onset time may be as short as 10 to 15 minutes. These are my references. Thank you.